You know, uh, even before the mayor of Winnipeg banned Joe Zubin from producing eight men to speak at the Walker Theater in 1934, our party has a good record of bringing culture to work in affordable prices. And I think it's a shame that uh, not all parties are represented uh, on this all party panel. This, uh, this election is an opportunity to bring these points of view. The Russian for that? Yeah. Uh, so unless you have overwhelming support uh, among the panelists for me to join them up there, I'll ask a question. Seeing none, <laughs> recently, any party in Parliament, uh, I know every party in Parliament, voted to bomb Libya. Uh, now, with the uh, depleted uranium poisoning the country for billions of years. Yeah, the Arctic culture question that you have, I'm not going to ask you. This is related to voting. I have a culture question. Yeah, okay. I put it in context. Um, <laughs> now, the Libya is a country, a uh, full member of the United Nations, a uh, uh, sovereign country. And I think that the, the vote by all the parties in Parliament was made easier by the culture of military that we have in our country. We are in a country that uh, the question for the war children find yellow ribbons as a tool to glorify war as a means of settling international disputes. We are in a country, sir, I'll have to ask you the question or I'll have to ask you to stand out. Okay. Uh, well, there's a part. What would you do to reduce militarism in culture? <laughs> Anybody want to add that? Well, I guess uh, I'll just speak to that briefly. I, I think what we're going to have to be is no fan of, of arts and artists. And, and, you know, personally, uh, I think the sooner he's out of that country, the better for the, for the international community, and I'm, I'm supportive of that happening. So, I, I, my name is Chris Kerr, I used to volunteer with a lot of the youth at the Sri Lanka and uh, did away um, where, where the funding was cut by, by the Conservative government. And, and I'd like to see why the $40 million that was stolen, grants that were orchestrated by Stephen Harper, stolen for the rebranding self-promotion campaign of Canada's economic action plan, for the rebranding of Canada's government to Harper's government, when is that money going to be returned to Canadians? Mm -hmm. And who's, how is Stephen Harper's not in jail right now for orchestrating a grand theft on our cultural funds? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we have a lot of children that need these funds. Who wants to answer that one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I guess just in relation to, to the question, it, it's premised on uh, the idea of, of stealing and um, Right. And ironically, the number of references is, is 40 million. Approximately. And so, yes, approximately. So I guess um, in, in relation to that, we can actually reference uh, another example in Canadian history. Unlike our government, where we actually had a bureaucracy advertised uh, various government programs for the betterment of our economy and our country to inform everyone as to how their taxes are being used. There actually was a, a situation not too long ago at, in the 90s where $40 million, the same number you referenced, was stolen from, from federal government coffers to uh, illegally finance the election campaign in Quebec. Yeah. And many polls were part of it came out of that. So allow it to add to the to um, the previous liberal government. So I guess if you're going to reference that, that the word stealing is $40 million, you're just forcing me to jump in. And I prefer not to be so partisan in this debate because I haven't been, but just in light of, of those two uh, words, both stealing and 40 million your forces. Yeah. So yeah. you guys will be part of it. Pay it back. Anyone else? Perfect for the kids. Anyone else want to uh, that? Okay, we'll move on. Thank you, sir. We'll move on to this next one over here. Hi, it's a two-part question. What elements from this bill do you think you will your party keep? And what elements from that bill will your party remove or change to a new bill to modernize the copyright act? Such a complicated issue. Um, I'm actually glad we've got a uh, guy named Charlie Angus in our conference sort of steering this through for us. Um, the only specific reference that I have to it in our platform is that we would introduce a bill on copyright reform uh, to ensure that Canada's compliance 
with its uh, international treaty obligations for balancing consumer needs. <coughs> and I know that's not going to be very specific enough for you. But I know that uh, you know, Parliament has wrestled with this issue uh, in that bill for most of the last Parliament. Uh, we're also talking about eliminating crown copyright and royal prerogative on all federal legal information. That's, that's not well at all, is it? I'm kind of skating here, so uh, uh, all I can say is that I know Parliament was consumed by it. I think the NDP has a pretty progressive stance on it. I'd like, like to believe we do. And uh, I better back off before I get this on the trouble. Anita, have I? I don't have anything out here. To, to this. This is very complicated legislation. I think it's really critical to begin um, the whole process over again. I've had opportunities to meet the stakeholders in my own writing, um, many of whom certainly were not uh, consulted. Uh, in it. I think there is a very limited consultation done in the development of the copyright legislation. I think it's important that there be a broader one. I think it's critically important that um, there cannot be uh, legislation which allows um, us to enjoy content without compensation to creators, and that is uh, a, a critical aspect of it. Uh, the Liberal government was, or the Liberals were key in developing some modifications as it related to musicians, but I think we have to go back to square one on the copyright legislation, begin the process again, identify the various components of it, and have meaningful uh, public discussion about it. Thanks, Dave. Uh, I all actually uh, share um, some of the same uh, views that have been said about the legislation that is somewhat premised on the previous bill, Bill 661, but Bill 32. I think brought in more um, input from uh, artists, uh, from creators, and from, from the music uh, industry. It's actually, I think, an example of Parliament attempting to work together in this minority government. There, there were perhaps not, not, not too many opportunities where that occurred, but perhaps this was one of them where there was a special legislative committee set up to uh, look at those two things too. And I, I think there was a lot of good uh, debate that occurred surrounding that. Ironically, it is, there is a lot of buy-in within certain sectors within the arts community for this bill. Uh, some consumer groups are, are less uh, interested in, in some of the elements relating to uh, content portability, but I, I think it, it's going in the right direction. I think too many previous governments have put off copyright reform, and, and that's where we're at today because of the fact that it's been put off for so many years. Uh, I think it, it needs to be addressed. We're, we're clearly uh, in a new era, and, I, and ironically, we will likely draft a bill that will be out of date uh, moments uh, after, or in fact, even before it's, it's finally given royal assent. So I think that's the challenge we're facing. Uh, the technology, of course, is, is moving so rapidly that it's become difficult to uh, keep up with, but the bill needs to be flexible, and, and I think it's endeavoring to do that. So I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, in the next session we'll be able to restore some of that uh, multi-party thinking that actually is, is making the bill uh, actually not uh, not too bad in its current form, but I agree there's room for improvement. Now, um, there's more information on the website about Bill C32 than, than I can discuss, but what I will say is that uh, the Green Party of Canada is um, committed to um, it's reworking some of the details of the current bill and to have an agreement with what Anita was saying, that the people need to be compensated for their work. And also there was concern about, uh, for example, if, if an, uh, about artists and playwrights being able to hold on to the copyright of their, of their, of their projects and their works and not forfeit them to um, galleries and, and museums or different theaters. Great. And I have one more point. I have one more point. I have one 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 point. I
There you go. But you've got to complete that. So that um, the people on that committee and the, the fair amount of inter-party cooperation never, never, never recommended a $75 iPod tactile. If anything, there would have been some small amount to make sure that music put on these uh, instruments would, in fact, go to the creators. But it was more like $5, three to, to uh, $5. So it's a, a disingenuous point for the Prime Minister and the Minister of Heritage to make it. Okay. Great question.